Welcome all. In this lecture, we are going to solve one more example based on root locus technique. So, in this example, what is says is that sketch the root locus with k as a variable parameter of a unity feedback system whose open loop transfer function that is g of s is given in the question. The g of s that is open loop transfer function is termed as k into s plus 2 over s square plus 2s plus 3 and in this question we need to plot a root locus so solution will be for in step 1 we need to determine the number of poles and zeros determination of number of poles and zeros so firstly we will calculate the number of poles on equating the denominator to 0 we will get the number of poles and on equating the numerator to 0 we will get 0 so firstly number of poles we will calculate So here the denominator is s square plus 2s plus 3. This is the quadratic equation and firstly we have to find out the roots of this quadratic equation and we will get the roots by the formula s equals to minus b plus minus under the root b square minus 4ac upon 2a. So S will be equals to here B value is 2 so minus 2 plus minus under the root B square that is 2 to the power 2 minus 4 A's value is 1 and C value is 3 whole divided by 2 into A that is 2 and A value is 1 on solving we get s equals to minus 2 plus minus under the root 4 minus 4 to the 12 divided by 2 so s will be equals to minus 2 plus minus 2.82 iota so on simplifying we can also write it as s equals to minus 1 plus minus root 2 iota so here from this expression our roots are s equals to minus 1 plus minus plus root 2 iota and our second root is minus 1 minus root 2 iota so here we got our two roots and these two roots are the nothing but poles of this open loop transfer function so two roots means two poles thus number of poles is equals to 2 let's calculate the number of zeros so our open loop transfer function is given as k into s plus 2 and we all know that on equating the numerator part to the 0 we will get our zeros only so here is the one bracket that is s plus 2 and on equating s plus 2 equals to 0 that is s plus 2 equals to 0 we get the value of s is s equals to minus 2 this is our 1 0 and not, no other brackets are remaining in the numerator that's why the number of 0 is equals to 1 only that is at s equals to minus 2 let's move on to the step number 2 that is
कैलकुलेशन ऑफ नंबर ऑफ ब्रांचेज ऑफ रूट लो की स्टेप टू कैलकुलेशन ऑफ नंबर ऑफ ब्रांचेस ऑफ रूट लोकस सो द नंबर ऑफ ब्रांचेस ऑफ द रूट लोकस कैन ईजीली बी कैलकुलेटेड बाय द फॉर्मूला इक्वल्स टू मैक्सिमम ऑफ नंबर ऑफ पोल्स comma number of zeros so here number of pole is equals to maximum of number of pole is equals to 2 and number of zero is equals to 1 so the maximum of 2 comma 1 is simply equals to 2 only so number of branches of the root loci is 2 let's move on to the step number 3 that is calculation of number of asymptotes so the number of asymptotes here can be calculated by the formula number of poles minus number of zeros so here the number of pole is equals to 2 minus number of zero is equals to 1 so number of asymptote is equals to 1 only let's move on to the next step that is step number 4 calculation of centroid of asymptotes so the centroid of asymptotes that is represented by x can easily be determined by the formula summation of real part of poles minus summation of real part of zeros whole divided by number of poles minus number of zeros so we know that our two poles that is pole p1 lies at minus 1 plus root 2 iota pole p2 lies at minus 1 minus root 2 iota and our zero 1 0 lies at z equals minus 2 so these are the information that we calculated earlier there are two poles and one zero only so putting the values in this equation we get here we are calculating only the real part of poles so the real part of pole p1 is minus 1 and the real part of pole p2 is also minus 1 so summation that is minus 1 plus minus 1 these are the summation of real part of pole minus real part of zero so real part of zero is minus 2 minus 2 divided by number of poles that is 1 2 number of pole is 2 and number of zero is 1 on calculating we get zero so centroid of asymptotes lies at zero moving on to the next step 
step 5 that is calculation of angle of asymptotes So, calculation of ang angle of asymptotes can easily be done by the formula 180 into 2m plus 1 whole divided by number of poles minus number of zeros. But for the calculation of angle of asymptotes that is phi we need to first determine the value of m and we all know that value of m starts from 0 and lies at number of poles minus number of 0 minus 1 so putting the values we get number of poles is equals to 2 minus number of 0 is equals to 1 minus 1 so we get here 2 minus 1 minus 1 that is 0 only so from this equation we get the value of m is 0 only we need to put this m equals to 0 in this equation to find the angle of asymptotes so phi will be equals to 180 into 2 multiplied by 0 plus 1 divided by number of pole here is 2 and number of 0 is 1 only so we get 180 2 multiplied by 0 that is 0 plus 1 so 1 and 2 minus 1 that is 1 so phi is equals to 180 only this is the angle of asymptotes So moving on to the next step that is root locus lie on which part of real axis. So firstly for this we have to draw a S plane. This is our S plane. This is imaginary axis. This is our real axis. On to the S plane our pole 1 lies at minus 1 plus root 2 iota pole 2 lies at minus 1 minus root 2 iota and our 1 0 lies at minus 2 only on plotting all these values onto the s plane we get here is minus 1 here is minus 2 at minus 2 we have our 1 0 at minus 1 minus 2 iota that is here is the plus root 2 iota and here is minus root 2 so minus 1 plus root 2 iota will be look like here because it is in alignment with minus 1 on the real axis and root 2 iota on the imaginary axis and minus 1 minus root 2 iota will be here since minus 1 plus root 2 iota and minus 1 minus root 2 iota are poles that's why they are represented by cross symbol and minus 2 is a 0 that's why it is represented by oval symbol circle now let's calculate that root loci lies on which part of real axis so how many areas are there firstly we have to find out so on the real axis we will just talking about only real axis so on the real axis how many number of poles and zeros are there only one zero and no other zero or pole lie on this real axis so our area one or the region one will start from minus two and and adds plus infinity here is the area 1 or region 1 region 1 that is represented by x1 
लाइज एट